Wearable cameras such as the GoPro and Google Glass are becoming more common for capturing everyday events such as cycling through a city and for sporting activities such as climbing. Although such videos contain interesting events, watching them at normal speed can be dead boring. Speeding up such videos by a factor of 10 could help, but simply subsampling the frames leads to horribly shaky and unwatchable results. Standard video stabilization is not able to smooth the time-lapse due to the wildly shaking input. Stabilizing the original video first, followed by time-lapse decimation, also doesn't work, since the stabilization window is typically very small. In this work, we demonstrate how to create smooth time-lapse from casually captured first-person videos. Such moving camera time-lapses are often referred to as hyperlapse. We create the hyperlapse videos in three stages. In the first one, we recover an approximate 3D model of the world using structure from motion. We extend previous techniques to operate on a larger scale. The second stage involves finding a 6D camera path through the world that moves the viewer along a trajectory that mimics the original path while simultaneously optimizing smoothness and renderability. Previous methods employ relatively simple path smoothing algorithms that cannot achieve acceptable results. Finally, in the third stage, we render the output hyperlapse video. Unlike previous stabilization work, we combine several input frames to form each output frame. We leverage image-based rendering techniques to reconstruct each output frame by projecting imagery onto the proxy geometry associated with each input frame. Our input videos are captured with a GoPro camera, which provides a fish-eye view of the world. We calibrate the lens distortion and convert the videos to a cropped linear perspective projection with a 112 degree horizontal field of view. Our next stage estimates the camera path as well as determines depth maps for the input images. To begin the process, we remove redundant frames, such as when the camera stops moving, for example when stopping at a red light. We compute the global match graph using a KD tree. Redundant frames appear as blocks along the diagonal of the graph. We detect these and remove the corresponding frames, which results in a cleaner match graph. Next, we estimate the camera locations as well as a sparse 3D point cloud using incremental structure for motion. Unfortunately, these algorithms do not scale to problems as large as ours. So we divide the input into overlapping batches of 1400 frames each with 400 frames overlap, and then reconstruct these separately and combine the results into a single global coordinate system. To render the frame's geometry from a novel viewpoint, we will need dense depth maps or surface models. Given the sparse points, we use guided feature point matching with less conservative matching criteria, but only searching near the epipolar lines in the neighboring images. This leads to denser point clouds. Finally, we compute dense proxies by solving for smooth depth values that approximate the reconstructed sparse points. Having a reconstruction of the scene, our next goal is to choose a path for the output video. We have several conflicting objectives for such a path. It should be smooth everywhere, but should not venture too far away from the input camera poses, otherwise the rendering will suffer. We balance these objectives through an optimization process resulting in the smooth path you see here in red. Due to its inherent complexity, the optimization is factored into two stages. This strategy dramatically improves efficiency and enables us to find suitable camera paths for rendering. We first optimize the location of the path using spline fitting. In this stage, we ignore orientation. Next, we optimize the orientation of the path while keeping the previously computed position curve fixed. In a pre-process, we compute a per-pixel image-based rendering penalty. Then we integrate it in screen space for all possible view directions. This gives us our pre-computed IBR fitness term. Optimizing this quantity together with smoothness is now easy. The final stage is to render images from the novel camera positions and orientations we computed in the previous stage. We could try to render each output frame by selecting the closest input frame, but this leads to holes in the view as the input orientations do not match those of the output path. Instead, a greedy algorithm selects a handful of source images for every output frame. The selection tries to ensure that every point in the field of view is covered by at least one high-quality proxy that does not suffer from too much distortion or motion blur. We stitch the selected sources using a Markov random field. The MRF has temporal connections to achieve coherent results. The stitched result still has apparent seams due to the varying exposure and white balancing of the input frames. We blend these seams and balance out color changes by solving a 3D Poisson problem. Let's look at some results now. You can find full-length versions of these clips and more results on our webpage. This is the original video in perspective projection. And here is a naive time-lapse consisting of every tenth frame. This is our result.
climbing video is the most challenging for a set due to the very nearby geometry as the climber passes by the rock formations. This leads to some artifacts where we didn't accurately reconstruct the geometry. Nevertheless, the result provides an informative hyperlapse experience.